Hey everyone, I'm back and today we're going to be talking about Prisoners and this movie is directed by Denis Villeneuve and this movie stars Hugh Jackman, Jake Gyllenhaal, Viola Davis and a whole bunch of other people and uh, what this movie is basically about is uh, you have two families and uh, their youngest uh, kids uh, go missing one day on Thanksgiving Day, sorry, and uh, they get to Jake Gyllenhaal Detective Loki and uh, he's basically just trying to find them and uh, that's basically what the movie is and it's basically just this big drama of uh, these characters just trying to find uh, their daughters and what uh, that does to them and uh, what they'll go to find them and this movie is awesome I really love this movie the first time I watched this movie I didn't know anything about it and I went in blind and I think that's the best way to experience this movie and I think it works a little bit better if you go in blind and uh, knowing as little as possible. But that's just my recommendation and uh, going in blind isn't going to be for everybody. That's just a little recommendation. So what do I like about this movie? I love the performances. Hugh Jackman, this is probably my favorite performance from him. And Jake Gyllenhaal's really great in it too. Viola Davis, uh, Terrence Howard... All great performances. There isn't a bad performance that sticks out to me. And everyone was great. Uh, there were great character moments. Uh, each character felt as if uh, they were going through something horrible. And uh, they had, like, uh, how do I say this? At the beginning of the movie, for example, uh, you hear Hugh Jackman's character. He He's with his son, but uh, the important fact is that he's uh, praying... And, uh, you know, you find out that he's religious and uh, that comes into play later on in the movie. And in case you're curious, not in like a gigantic way, like, oh, this is going to be uh, reincorporated later in the movie as like a major plot point. It's just a character moment, really, as I would describe it. I'm just going to get uh, this right out of the way. What the heart of this movie is, is uh, the, these different characters dealing with uh, their their youngest daughter being missing and uh, it's a uh, very sad and uh, you kind of it leaves this like hor as you're watching the movie you're just uh, not not in a good mood and you just want to uh, this end and uh, have some resolution and uh, get an answer are these girls like are they dead are they what what happened to them and as the movie gets uh, uh, as the movie goes along you uh, find out answers, but it's very slow, but it's never boring. Well, 99% of it's never boring. There was like one little moment where I was a little un uninvested, but I can forgive it because it's just one moment. But the rest of it is fantastic. It's uh, always moving, and uh, there's always something to keep you interested in the movie, and you just can't take your, and you can't take your eyes off of it because what's uh, going on on the screen is just so engaging that uh, you just want to figure out what happens <laughs> and that was my experience while watching this movie i couldn't take my eyes off of it and there were some moments that uh, like genuinely disturbed me and uh, without spoiling anything there are some disturbing moments uh, in this movie it's i wouldn't say it's like a gory movie like i don't know what the saw sequels were like not on that level not even close but uh, there are things in this movie that uh, <laughs> what I see in this movie is not something that I often see. And the presentation that goes along with it is also very effective, I felt. I'll uh, quickly mention the music really quickly. Uh, there was uh, one uh, thing that uh, there was one piece that was played like four times throughout the movie. And I think it worked appropriately for the movie. I never felt as though it was overused uh, like in uh, what, what was the Oh, uh, Requiem for a Dream, where it, that movie used its music like six or seven times. <laughs> this movie used it more appropriately than that movie, and each time it was used, it, it added so much to the movie. And uh, if you didn't have uh, that score in the movie, I think uh, the scenes would be not as good, because I felt it uh, added a lot to the movie. One other thing I want to mention is that... Uh, Although this movie does show you the same thing quite a few times, it never feels repetitive because 
you're constantly uh, feeling as uh, things are moving along, even though uh, similar things are happening throughout the movie. I feel as though the film does a good job at not feeling as if it's just repeating itself. Like it's constantly presenting new information and you're given new things along with these things that you've already seen before. And that's what made it work for me. Before I give you my rating for this movie, I do want to say this. I do feel as though this movie has replay value, as in you can pick up new things upon each viewing as you watch the movie. And I got that uh, while watching this movie for a second time. And uh, I can't say what those things are because that would spoil the movie. But I will say that they exist in the movie. And definitely check this out. And I would highly, highly recommend that you check this movie out. And if you haven't seen this movie yet, move this uh, to the top of your list. I think this movie is fantastic. It uh, gets a lot of emotions out of me. It gets it starts uh, off uh, kind of light and uh, kind of funny, similar to Requiem for a Dream. I've said this already, but as the movie goes along, it gets uh, uh, worse and worse, and things are just getting crazier and crazier. Not as in like uh, things are intense and so far out there that uh, you can't handle it. It's just very the emotions it gets out of you. It just uh, gets more and more, and it just becomes sad. That's why I would kind of describe the tone for this movie as sad and you're just watching like a drama play out in front of you. And all of the drama that happens in the movie, it feels natural. It doesn't feel forced. And that's what makes this movie work for me. Definitely check out this movie because I think you'll enjoy it. And I'm going to give Prisoners a 10 out of 10. One more thing that I want to mention is the director... uh, of this and Blade Runner 2049. Uh, I rated uh, both movies like 10 out of 10s, like back in the day when I first reviewed that movie, Blade Runner 2049. I gave that an A+, which is a 10 out of 10 now. Uh, You might be wondering, do I like this or Blade Runner 2049 better? I'll have to rewatch Blade Runner 2049 one more time to really know the answer to that question. But as of now, uh, these are my two favorites uh, from this director. And everything else is... It's great. I I love everything else he's done. I haven't seen his first movie, Incendies. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, That's the only one I haven't seen. Uh, Enemy was great. Sicario, Arrival. Great movies uh, that I love. And I'm excited to see his newest film, Dune, that's coming out. But all that aside, thank you for watching my videos as always. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a like and comment down below what you thought of Prisoners down below. And my social media links will all be in the description down below, so follow me there. And last but not least, subscribe to be a part of Fully Nation. And I'll see you when I get my next review up. And I'm stuck between two movies. It is either going to be High Life or The Wolf of Wall Street. It's going to be one of those two movies. But until I get that up, thank you for watching and have a great day.